Okay, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I'm here. Uh, I'm I'm your co-host. I'm today. Hey guys, what's up? It's Rio. Hello, everyone. Big day. It's your boy Zy Fox. And I want to introduce somebody special we have in the podcast today. He is unquestionably, undoubtedly, the best Adam player in our scene. One of the IPS uh, finalists this past uh, weekend. Uh, welcome to. Um, Welcome to say hi to Gur, everybody. Hello, hello. Gur's my favorite Adam player. No offense, Dave. <laughs> as much of a favorite as Adam players can be. Yeah. But. Is there actually a favorite Adam player? I feel like everybody I mean, hates congrats, Adam. Congrats, dude! You've actually hit that threshold as being the only loved Adam player. I know right? that's like such a huge <laughs> achievement because like, I could just be Aquaman and hate it, or Black Adam, but like I'm Adam, and the people hate, but like they love me. That's so lucky. Well, girl, let's start with you, man. Tell us about your experience, you know, this past uh, Tuesday. You know, I think if I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. you correct me. I think you lost to uh, Honeybee at first, and then I think Scar. Just talk about your matches yeah. and your experience. Yeah. Well, hmm, where I begin? I, I mean, we all came in there for, like, uh, Sunday, and we all had, like, time to practice and, like, time to introduce ourselves with interviews and all that. And it was just a really, like, Really nice experience being in that uh, venue and seeing the stage. And I, I won't lie, you know, the pressure of uh, my first match was building up as soon as we were getting ready to start. Because that 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 moment was just like a big day for us. Um, when I fought like Honeybee, it was like I don't know. It was just like a different mode I usually have in tournament. Because I, I I played BCF the week before, but it was just an exhibition. But just my match with Honeybee, it it felt like it was going to be like either a wash or very close because that's how our matches go. It's always been like 3 2 or 3 1 or whatever. But and and Honeybee was like really confident against me. He was always telling me, I I thought he was bluffing, but he he always fought the other Adams and was really good in the matchup. But when we played, it was just like we were super like super close head to head and we were just making a lot of reads but at the end he got the he got the last hit and got the win you know i I, yeah the funny thing is you know is that a lot of the people before the tournament before they play you they will literally come to me (laughs) i'm telling you i don't know if you ever knew about this like him for example yeah i knew it i think the first time that he fought you not one of the first times i knew you could honestly i say this with all the respect i knew he was gonna kick your ass Cause you were not ready for the stuff that, cause we were like already like hundred games, hundred games in. Yeah. And he was, and he was doing that. And you know, this is against against Adam if they randomly like pound because you know can like go underneath down three, you can go under, you know, I should say, goes over yeah, even yeah. down three, goes over the pound, you know, goes over the ground pound. And, yeah, it's you know, a very, it's a very good move, yeah. very uh, and it's like hard useful to match up. Yeah, it's hard to stop with Adam. So that's kind of like the meta that we were developing. It was, and that thing was really fucking annoying, you know. So. Oh. Yeah, very. Uh, there was a lot of mistakes I, I did in that matchup. It's just I didn't punish properly, and I ground pounded on wake up. But like that was just out of my mind because of how intense that tournament or that tournament match was. Like we both were like messing up, being it you know in the morning. Like I think I played best in the morning, in my, in my opinion. But it's still like a huge like to be on stage in the morning is like a completely different experience than just playing your pools in the morning. Um, what would you say is that matchup, uh, Adam versus Flash? Oh, Flash favor, hundred percent. You really of think so? Would say what, that. Makes, what, yeah. what makes you say that? Um, so mostly is the damage difference is a, a huge thing. It's just uh, this is like before the trait meta and like the neutral, like the damage difference makes a difference in that matchup because well, like two bars and trait that's like sixty percent of your life. And the times you have to hit him and open him up is a lot different than when he can just keep staggering you or if you're in the corner, he's resetting you. Or even like his meter burn ground pound just being plus. It's like good pressure against that with the damage that he has. So not only that, as well as him being able to defend against trait really well and punishing. If you block an overhead, he can down one, down one to punish. If you don't like open him up in time, if you stop to grab, he can just down one punish like if you stop at any point in your trait pressure so it's like really hard as you see in the match he was blocking it super well and the few hits i got i just just got scraps and damage it just reset the neutral i feel like i'm putting myself at risk uh doing trait in that matchup 
Yeah, if you don't mind, do you feel like uh-huh. this is kind of what he started developing in speed? This was obviously a while ago when he practiced when he was practicing for you. Like he would do like a midi down one. Yes, for the wake up. Yeah, the wake exactly. up two. Yeah, and it's it seems like if I do the teleport, I get obviously I get blown up. If I you know I mean if I you know the tele the meter burn one I get blown up. I do the regular yeah, you get blown up. Yeah, the regular super punishes you. If you do yeah. the back four two the dash, he can just yeah. back four two and return, or, or even just like dash up punish. So it seems like so it's really hard to, hold to it. wake up. Yeah, you have to hold the Yes, you up. can't wake up. And Honeybean, like, he's always scouting it on knockdown because he knows he can just get a lot of damage out of it. So you have to hold his mix up so you get knocked down. So that's like, like in that regard, if you're a confident player against playing against Adam, that matchup is bad. But like, if a player is like really frustrated against Adam, it makes a huge difference because they're not gonna do the same thing or do the same thing as well as someone who's like a composed player like Honeybee. So you know. For me, that's that really factors in a matchup. I can't. It's hard for me to tell like matchup numbers without knowing if the player actually knows how to fight Adam properly. I would say. I mean, I would. I mean, you've beaten him before. I would probably think it's five five. I understand, like you know, uh-huh. I've played a match thousands of times, but yeah, the da- I think the damage difference. That's what really kills Adam. Like, cause it's so hard to, you know, cause you can't make up trade. You know, if you get hit by that, it's sixty seventy percent, and you know, plus yeah. Percent. You can't. It, Adam has to hit you like fucking three times to make up that damage, right? It's yeah, exactly, really exactly. And you know, like you, you're not allowed to make that many mistakes in that matchup because <laughs> you will get punished like heavily for it. So, I, I for me, that's a huge factor. I don't. Can you whatever. also talk about if you don't mind? Yeah. I talk about. I really, I thought the Brainy match was almost unwinnable because I played Scar. It was I, mean, uh-huh. I just almost threw the control away. But you seem, you know, like you seem to have. Much, much better understanding of that matchup than any Adam Adam player by far. Yeah. Um. So I still think that matchup is like still really difficult if the the Brainiac player plays it a certain way, like a lot safer and a lot more, uh, <laughs> just like mix up oriented instead of over committing. Because uh, I like I that's like my character demon. Like all year, everybody knows that I've lost like a Brainiac almost always in tournament like i lost a mystery bot at a uh, combo breaker and um and that was like his remember that time i think forever king jr did really good against yeah fi- final round yeah final round for uh, third place i lost against uh franco uh, burrito dude i'm not joking while I, while i was watching the ips finals i saw you go up against like three or so brainiacs i was like <laughs> yeah, dude, it, it was probably I, so I angry three right brainiacs, now three brainiacs i fought so that was like the major test. If anything, that was for me. That was like the major test of being of deserving to be in like IPS and how much I have to work hard for that win. Yeah, I can. Agree I want to ask that. you though, Greg. Yeah, I, I can agree with that because realistically, you take a look at the path that you had as an Adam player, which you know it, it's not the easiest thing in the world to be able to uh, find. I, I'm take this with a grain of salt, but to find mm-hmm. a really bad matchup. But your path at the finals. Yeah, it was rough. It was a really rough path for you, as far as matchups are concerned. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't disagree. It, it was, I really had to like pull, like just adapt super well to like each player playing that same character. Um, Br- Basics was like the hardest in my opinion. Well, not the hardest. Scar was the hardest because he, I know he was adapting to how I played the other Brainiacs. And we played a set before to help me get ready. So already was like it was going to be a challenge in the be- from the beginning. I always um, think that's super interesting too because that's something a lot of uh, I guess like the majority of like the casual audience or like the less competitive players don't understand is that you automatically add on a layer of mind games when you mm-hmm. know someone knows the matchup. Yes. And they know the gaps. They know that's something a lot of people don't talk about, and it makes it harder when people are grinding for your character specifically in an event yeah. like the finals. Exactly. Like when people, like even if people train against Adam, like no, no one plays like my Adam or the same way. Like I know Basics has an Adam, and like people lose to that Adam or people lose to my Adam. It's just completely different in play style and just everything in general. Right. On, on different habits. Now, um, I wanted to yeah. ask you, um, talking about the finals and stuff, just to kind of give a little bit of more of a guidance to it, what would you say is was the favorite part about the finals? The favorite? Um, Your absolute that's a, favorite part. What stands that's a good out the question. most? Um, <clears throat> wow. I think 
the most like my favorite personally was the interviews the interviews and the photos because they were taking a production like interviews of us in case that we were to go to top four and they would bring it up uh televised i feel like the questions that were asked to me and how i answered them and how quiet the room was while they were recording is like super reflective on how far i've come to be in that position like i was like they they didn't show the whole interview like i know part of it of mine was on tv you know even though i was like not in top four but like you know i was getting like emotional on one of them and like one of the questions i'm like wow like it's just when you think about where because they were asking how did you get here and like your path just like in life in general who was the, the interviewer was it josh i believe it was josh so that was his name i, I forgot joshua like, gray the the eso guy owner um no when i mean interview i mean like for the tv not like in oh, the interview beforehand. on stage okay yeah okay. beforehand it was shown it was for tv I that's see. the interview i was talking about where they oh, take so a that picture was on the media trophy. day then yeah media day yeah not okay. not on uh Honestly, that I kind of blew that interview with the microphone on Josh because there was a huge echo behind us. It was it was like throwing me off because I didn't get to say the things I wanted to say. So and because you know we were doing a pre-interview too to get me ready for it. So you know I was kind of disappointed in that, but that's like the only thing I would say to be honest. And that leads me into the second part of the question. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is your least favorite part about the finals? Performance um, aside, I want to uh, strictly production or okay. crowd or whatever. Um, it's hard to say because they nailed a lot of the stuff. I think one thing I will say is I really like surprised and a bit disappointed that they didn't have headsets that properly worked for the finals. Like I feel like I don't know. I just feel like you you set the standard for all, all tor tournament organizer like IPS to have headsets for the setups but then like there's no setups for the finals knowing that there's going to be like a huge crowd in the venue and uh commentators talking i feel like that was like overlooked and yeah, even when they seems to be yeah the problem is yeah being able to hear commentators during your tournament set seems yeah. to be like not okay yeah just, yeah i, I was gonna say this doesn't that feel like a little jarring to hear what they're saying or, you know, just hearing like what they feel what's going on during the match while you're playing in the moment? Honestly, honestly, um, that was my first ever like experience having that, like the experience having that, uh, hearing commentators, but I honestly feel like it helped me more than anything. Well, that's a problem in itself too, because you know, me, I, I, I know I've cast events in the past. Yeah. I'm more of an analytics guy, so I could explain why someone's doing what they're doing and if you're lost in the middle of a match and you hear me basically coaching at some point yeah it, it, it really felt like that it really felt like it yeah, was like that's coaching. another reason why i don't think headsets are like not having headsets that's a serious problem and on we shared one monitor people. and we were like next to each other i feel like that setup could have been a, done a little bit better you know i, I know if they've done a lot like is i can't really complain that much but if i were to say you know the least like favorite is just the, the stream or not the stream setup, but yeah, the stage setup itself okay. in terms of uh, when, where we played. I want to ask you, how did you mentally prepare for this tournament? Like, did you take notes? Um, did you uh, play matches with people, then record them and study your footage? Like, what was your uh, exact training? So my specific training for this, actually, I usually study uh, my matches and my past uh, tournament matches and my habits, but I had a resource that I don't usually have as this, you know, Honeybee's a avid YouTuber. And I was watching our matches together and what situations we were put in. And of course, we, you know, we were different players than back then. But just seeing the thought process and, and seeing, because he, he has tournament analysis of our match at CEO. And I'm like, wow, let me watch this. These, these videos are public. These are like resources I can see for for me to study yeah, that's actually very smart yeah and i said that in the interview too with josh um i said he has a youtube and i, I try to prepare as much as i can and of course i didn't want to completely use all my study time on uh tim or honeybee because there's you no know, there's other opponents that i have to take account of for like basics tweety yeah of course yeah things like that so and you know bcf really helped me out i was glad i was invited 
to that event because it helped me prepare for just you know being a specific player instead of just playing a uh, pools into tournament but you're you're there on the stage already and you have your own intro and the eyes are on you so i mm. thought i was one, prepared for that yeah yeah one last thing i want to say what was going through your head when you were playing it's tech master and then he selected bane against you <laughs> um <laughs> honestly i didn't it's not that I didn't think much of it, but it's funny because two days ago I played a super long set with Biohazard, so I wasn't really worried. But I know it's a good mm. pick against Adam because Bane, in my opinion, Bane beats Adam. Um, mm. for That's very interesting. Yeah, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know what? This match on paper seems like Bane wouldn't be too bad. Yeah, you know? and he took a game off for me. But honestly, I, he doesn't main Bane, so it was just easy to adapt from that that last game he won. Well, to be completely honest, I was honest, I, was, I was confused because I had the stream on mute. I, I work from home, but I was watching. I was like, oh, Bane versus Adam. I was like, oh, Gerwin Bane against Tekken Masters Adam. That's crazy. And then I looked, and I was like, oh, the names are switched. No big deal. And then it turned out that <laughs> Tekken Masters is playing Bane. I'm like, wait a fucking minute. I was like, oh. That's yeah. too funny. That was the biggest surprise next to Basics going Starfire against Tweety. I guess Tweety, that yeah. Was that, that was huge as well. Like, I was just looking at the mind games because he he said he had something for for Tweety or whatever. Or when I hear like conversations, I'm like, I didn't even know what was going on. And when I see that mirror, I'm like, wow, that actually makes sense. And he won. Like he actually took a few games and it was close. And it's just you know that whole tournament always ha had me at my the edge of my seat. I think it's definitely one of the best. Um, well, the the levels. extent that Basics went to to keep that secret. Oh you know, yeah, speaking. yeah. I mean, apparently, like before any online set basics played, he used Brainiac as the last character. So on the player card, it said that he was playing Brainiac in that. That's yep. it was next so smart level. That was it was, was next star. level meta. Actually, next level meta is like like he because because Tweety comes you know joking around like trash talking about yeah I'm gonna that Brainiac's looking free like <laughs> like he kept talking trash about his Brainiac and I'm like. Is he really going to use Brainiac? Like, I don't yeah. know. Is there something in that matchup? I don't know. And then, like, Starfire, I'm like, and Tw Tweety probably had, like, an oh shit moment because he probably didn't expect oh, yeah. it. And it was I working out. I don't expect that, dude. That was yeah. Galaxy Brain mind games to be able to pull that it's off. Just so I didn't incredible. even know yeah. that's how the player card worked. And this guy literally already knew his workaround. But uh, does anyone else have any other questions? I for do Gert? have one question for Gert. All right. Go ahead. Uh, all right. So what advice can you give to new and up and coming players out there that are looking to basically make a jump from like how you did, you know, like the, mm -hmm. your whole come up and everything? Any advice? Um, I would always recommend not, there's always going to be times where you're going to lose and there's going to be such like an uphill like battle for you. And it's going to feel like there's nothing else. Like there's going to, you're going to always have this mental block that why am I still playing? Or if I lose, it's just like, you feel like there's no other way and i would recommend that you always take a moment and always reflect on what you do and how you play not not only just play to enjoy but like why why you play or, or uh how well you play and just like be more self-aware of of yourself not in, in terms of a player and in, in game or outside of the game that, that helps you improve i feel like those steps should be like taken in order to like improve like majorly instead of just grinding just to grind i feel like studying means a lot more and not playing way too much because i i don't grind 24 7 i don't keep playing and playing and just i get burned out really easily that, that's not that's just who i am so i recommend new players if you're playing the game just uh always look ways to improve try to ask questions try to look for those resources because it's there for you and try to look, you know, try to have someone to look up to, because that that was a really big help for me. Who did you look up to? Um, back then it was uh, so Coach Steve was really like, he he was always like there, like coach, you know, coaching me mid set, keep trying to keep me calm down, because he knew that that mental block was like a huge thing for me, and just me being frustrated mid set and very emotional, and just like not cracking. Like cracking so easily that it would just destroy me in the game. But now I keep I keep that in such control that it brought me into the position I am today. And that's all he did. Like when he sometimes when he would coach me, he wouldn't even tell me what was like much what was wrong with the matchup. It was just me for me to take a moment and take a breath 
And that's what I did. If you notice my tournament matches, I never went in there like quick. I always took a moment, thought about, you know, what I was doing, took breaths, drank water, super hydrated. I drank like six bottles of water before I played uh, my first match. I, I chugged and I used to try to stay hydrated because those things mean a lot. Those little moments mean so much that people really underestimate. No, and so, I, think that's, I think that's really interesting because um, mm -hmm. playing on tilt – is like the cause of a lot of top players demise when it comes to yes. play. and 100%. if you don't have emotions under control i'm one of the biggest i have the biggest problem with that if i play uh -huh. on if you get me on tilt it's over i lost like that's yes so having someone to kind of keep you in check is arguably just as important as knowing what you did wrong because sometimes it's not that you did anything wrong it's that you started playing with your emotions instead yeah exactly you're just panicking you just they're just waiting for you to like hang yourself because you're you're messing up like you, they're just waiting for you to make that mistake because you're just riled up and you just want to do something in the neutral just people just crack before you know anything could happen and when i learned that fact i'm like wow you know it, it meant so much for me to adapt like my adapting got so much better because of that. Once upon a time, Rio used to do that for me until, until he started competing. Stop competing. Damn, bro. Rio, wait, come what do you back. Mean? Wait, wait, wait. What are we talking about? <laughs> Remember Evo? You used to what? Remember it's, like you used to coach you? Yeah, no, I used to coach you all the time. What do you mean I stopped doing that? When was the last time you went to that tournament, dude? Well, to be fair, I haven't been in tournament in a while, so it's hard for me to coach you. Exactly. <laughs> That's the and you haven't been in tournament in a while either. <laughs> <That's not exactly laughs> <what I'm making. laughs> All right, so I think we could move on to the next topic, which is something I think we were all pretty stoked to see. I thought it was really cool. Um, I want to get everyone's input on Scar calling out Echo Fox because that was awesome. I mean, that literally was probably a top three moment for me. Yeah, uh, I think yeah. that was one of the highlights of the tournament, and more people need to do that because we need more people to put on shows like that, you know, and really express how they feel. And it's better when players mix in their emotions with the game, you know, because it shows the passion that they have. Yeah. It displays that our scene has it has personality. It, re it really does. Exactly. It's, it may not, be few and far between at times. Not as much as it used to, anywhere near. As much oh, no, no. Nowhere near where it needs to be. But yeah. when people say our scene is desert dry with personality, that's not necessarily yeah. true. I, I, I think I feel, this was a really good. Yeah. I feel like Scar and like Tweety bring up that good example of different diverse personalities that we don't we really usually have. Because, uh, like, even bringing the example, like Tweety uh, against Sonic at Evo, like, no one, I, you, you can tell me any other person that would just stand up and pop off mid set against Sonic Fox like that. Or and you know Scar calling out in an interview like on that big stage like he 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 didn't care he he said what he felt you know he yeah yeah he just put it out there and it's, we don't really it's true we don't have you know, much of that and it's really refreshing to see so I think I'm all for I, it. I think so and I think more than anything because realistically <laughs> I mean I don't have an issue saying this. What Echo Fox did to just completely ghost half their players without notice was fucking wrong. It was just wrong. Now, I'm sure there's tons of facts that we don't know. So I'm not going to say yeah. they're like, oh, well, they just felt like, you know, backing off. Like, I'm sure there were tons of issues because it wasn't just players that they cut. It was a lot of – it was employees as well. Yeah, man managers and stuff. Yeah. So I, I'm sure there's reasons for it. But at the end of the day, when you're on the receiving end of something like that, you know – that's got to be a pain in the ass, you know, to think that, you know, you're with one of the best organizations, your contract's not up yet, so you don't even need to be thinking about anything else. But then overnight, all of a sudden, you get a call. Like, it's just, it, that's wild to me. And it, it made... Yeah, it's a very watching, scary feeling. It, it really is, because it shows how, how unstable being in esports can really be. And that's, that's mm -hmm. a scary thought. Well, you got to think about that they let go... I'm sure people already know about this. They let go their pretty much their best Tekken players, one of the best play techers in the world that we have, you know, in in um, Saint and JDCR. That was kind of like a huge red flag for me. So I'm not really, you know, with all due respect to Scar and you know Theo. I mean, those guys are winning almost all Tekken tournaments, and if they're gonna let them go, then pretty much anybody not named Sonic Fox is probably gonna, you know, gonna leave as well. So. What do you think really was the reason, though? It was budget cuts. It had yeah, to be. Yeah, probably the money. 
Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure because there's, like I said, that we don't know what what really went on behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things, and uh, I agree with M2 Dave saying that you know it's if they're dropping JDCR, you know th those are you know legendary players, and not even really just like far off as a matter of skill, but their skill is more connected to a more mainstream game. You know, the Tekken is you know a legacy game for fighting game players like it's just everyone knows what tekken is and not to say everyone doesn't know what injustice is but you have to look at the difference you know there's it's categorized like tekken and street fighter are like these like wholesome names that you'll you know everyone has heard of but i don't think it has to do with skill i think it was just straight budget cuts yeah and they just they picked and choose and that's it just really what it is. Sucks. But that, that made the moment that much better. I so think. the only fighting game plus remaining right now is Sun Effects or Keto. Is that it pretty much? Uh, the, the kill Echo... stage as well? He's, he, I believe he's still Isn't there. Justin Wong also a Kafox? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Justin, yeah. Wong, yeah. Justin Wong, Takedo, Sonic Fox. I think that might be it, right? Yeah. I think yeah, it's definitely a big cut, though, because no, no, they, they dropped like the over half of the still. team. Okay, all right. Yeah, him too. Well, but you have to look at the games that those guys are participating in. That's Street Fighter and Dragon Ball, the two biggest games right now. Yeah. So it's understandable. Granted, I don't think I would have never expected JDCR to be dropped from Echo Fox. I just yeah. I was not expecting that because the guy is super dominant in a game that's very well received by the community. So it was that one was more of a shock than anything. I love Theo and Scar, and it was really sad to see that happen to him. Yeah. But if we're talking budget cuts, you look at the injustice scene first. I think that's I think that's unfortunately the most obvious. Yeah, I, the season was ending. There was it didn't seem like there was much after that. So it's just a lot of money. Now, granted, I don't know, I don't know JDCR's like exact placings, but for someone like me who doesn't really follow competitive Tekken and I know who JDCR is, that's why I'm so surprised because. It's almost like Justin Wong. Like I know for a time Justin Wong wasn't getting the placings that he was known for, but it's still Justin Wong. It's just it's that name is just almost marketable at that point. Yeah, it's like echoed around the FGC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. I mean I, I, I follow the, the tech and tech, I can tell you, man. JDCR has been placing very well. You know, he might not be getting, you know, he might not be winning tournaments, but he's getting top two, three, you know, almost every tournament. So it's a surprise to me. All right. Well, uh, does anyone else have anything to say about the Echo Fox thing? Let oh, me just, ask just one cool. question to Gur before we leave. I, I really want to know about this because I think this goes kind of back to the player he used to be. And Gur, man, how did you go from Bane to Adam? You have to explain that. How to go me. from Bane to Adam? Yeah. Uh, so you so, were you were you were a rushdown fool, and then yeah, <laughs> and then you became like. You know, one of the. I mean, Adam is still a harder Crazy goal, fool. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, he, he can also be rushed down a tree. But yeah, um, you know, I, I don't only go for uh, big bodies. Like, I love my weird characters too. Like, I like you know unconventional, weird, unique characters other than like big bodies that I can play. Um, so when, like when I saw Adam, I'm like, wow, this guy looks. Just like nutty, so crazy. Cause I, I used to play Deadshot back then for season one to help me with matchups. Yeah, yeah. So. You know, when I play Adam, I'm like, wow, this really feels complete. Like, I can play my own way in different ways. I feel like I'm not restricted to one style of play, like uh, rush down or, you know, zoning. So I, it's like a little bit of both. And I can just frustrate the player, which I, you know, I low-key like doing. <laughs> I like making people mad because that's what I used to do with Interactables and Deadshot and, you know, Sinestro and uh, Injustice 1, but I didn't really play him in tournament. So just Adam just, you know, came by perfect. And what really sold me was a week in next level when Adam came out. I didn't even, he was like my day one Adam. I was like playing him in casuals barely. Didn't even know the combos or anything like that. That tournament, I, I won with uh, Adam. My, my day one Adam from my, uh, my Bane. Like I beat Nyx, I beat Forever King. I forgot who else was there. And I'm like, I think there's something here that is <laughs> worth pursuing. And it just the rest was like history from there because I just worked on with you know learning how to play, and just, you know it got me to this point, and just fit my playstyle. Not well, not exactly like playstyle, but just like the character that you know I like. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. Anything else for girl for girl guys? 
What's next for you? Uh, what's next for me? Well, uh, I really like Soul Calibur 6. So I've been playing a little bit of that because I'm entering it for NEC. So it should be fun learning a new fighting game for a while. Just uh, I'm I'm still gonna be playing Injustice. Like I'm still gonna be streaming at times. I'm still gonna be uh, like entering regionals and you know KIT things like that. Like I I, I I love the game enough that I can see myself playing it and learning more about. Like right now I'm learning like Raiden, <laughs> like how to play Raiden. So that's oh like a fun God. experience for me. <laughs> Good luck yeah. with that. <laughs> yeah. No, Raiden, I, I... Raiden's actually a very fun character. I really hope Gur brings out his potential because. Regardless of what people say, I think Raiden's downplayed. I, I know, not that you know I know you're the biggest advocate of Raiden not being as bad as people say. You've been like that. I'm not saying he's top five or anything, but he's really not as bad as people are making yeah. it seem. I think that he's, good good. Good. he's got some good shit. Best, yeah. in my opinion. He's got some good stuff going for him, though. Sure, my closing thoughts for you, mm-hmm. playing Soul Calibur, don't play Astaroth, man. Damn, don't that's make what that I was doing. Mistake. Yeah, I, I feel like don't I feel like that. I seen a lot more stuff against some universal uh, throw breaks and like hitbox issues, and I'm yeah. like, oh, this is gonna be rough. Hitbox issues. There's tech to grab, uh, to tech grabs either way with you like playing. <laughs> there's like some options yeah. like now. I'm like, as an Astroth player, I'm like totally disheartened. So, uh, just we'll see so what like, happens. But yeah, I I, I didn't. I, I'm still having fun though. So that's like. Big it me. is a really fun game, and for mm-hmm. you, I think you'll really enjoy playing Astroth. Just be be prepared for the road. Yeah, I'm ready for the maxis, <laughs> dude. I love it. Yeah, I can't wait to get rushed down. I mean, it's he's, okay, really, he's really like similar to Bane in that, like, if you have your soul charge and you touch oh, someone yeah. with like with like two two B or something, it's it's over. Like that's like 55. yeah, it's really fun. Like it's really fun when you're on soul charge and you're doing that plus spin move, or you get a mm-hmm. command grab into chain links. Like, on that's the hype. Days. Ring I mean, out. You're right at home. Don't get me wrong. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I see this and like I see all these animations. Yeah, like this this feels good. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much for coming mm-hmm. on, giving us a little bit of insight, and uh, I hope to see you, you know, in the future, continue to play Injustice and whatever comes. Thank you for having me on. Really appreciate it. Yeah, uh, man. Hey, yeah. girl. Thank you so much for coming on, yeah. man. I'll st- I'll still be By the way, chat. what's your next tournament? Uh, what's your NEC. Next tournament? NEC. Mm-hmm. Well, man, I hope you come awesome. back on so we can talk more anime match on something. Dude, of course, man. You already know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, See you guys. Awesome. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank have you. a good one. Well, guys, let me, if you don't mind, guys, stay tuned. We're going to have another IPS finals here in a moment. Here. I think you guys are going to love this segment. But I want to. If you guys don't mind, skip ahead to Big D's great idea. Talk about the award ceremony, if you don't mind, Big D. Yeah, I'm cool with going straight into that. All right, so this segment, depending on, I don't know how much time we have left. Uh, do you want this to be in-depth, or do you want to just do like a speed run? Let's do a speed run. Let's bring on the, the next person. Uh, well, right. right now we have 30 minutes left. So uh, Yeah, uh, but I, we'll see what the next person has to yeah, say. We'll, we'll, we'll keep it short and sweet. So now, for background for the audience, um, I have not given these categories away to the other hosts yet. They have no idea what's coming. Um, So it's going to be completely blind. We're just going to kind of go in a row. I'm going to start with the biggest choke of season. Ooh, I know someone that comes to mind instantly. Can I go first? Choice is Hero Killers. Uh, I don't know if that's fair. Shit, man. See. No, see, I, Riot against I, Fox, Sonic Fox. No. See the thing. What about Buffalo though? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh my dude, God. there's so many matches I've seen yeah. where Buffalo had it, and for some miraculous reason, nothing against Buffalo because he's an amazing player. I have no idea how he loses some of these matches. Buffalo versus Rewind at Combo Break. Not even only Buffalo. Rewind. Buffalo versus Hayate. Buffalo versus Rewind. Like there's a lot of them. <laughs> Yeah, that that was the best comeback I've ever seen in tournament. Like rewind versus that's literally magic pixel. Obviously, Firestorm he gained a little bit back, and he was able to survive like an extra hit, I believe. But that was, bro. Yeah, my pick would be Buffalo, and then after that, uh, Hero Killer. Does it have to be a turn? Does it have to be a? Can it be like just something to be in general? Like how about all, all how season about, two? It could be an online set and like War of the Gods. It could be a tournament. How, how about this? How come King is not? How, how come King did not make the IPS finals? Is that a choke? Um, I wouldn't really call it a choke. 
but I could say it's it's a surprise. I wouldn't call it a choke. A choke to me is like someone who clearly had the set and then ends up. All right. And the only reason why I was picking Hero Killer Stain is because you know the first few games at SCR were like really they were dominant. Like he did really well. And from what I understand, you know, he was talking shit during the set. So that's something you have to take in. So this dude, it was so sure that he was going to be Fox up 2-0, starts talking shit mid-set, and then all of a sudden gets sent to losers. That must hurt. Like, to me, that's the <laughs> that biggest joke thing. To. Not to say that I don't – I like Hero Killer. I think he's really good for the scene as well as, like, a big breakout player. But uh, that, to me, is definitely the biggest joke. Runner-up is going to be, for me, uh, Buffalo versus Rewind combo break. That was just that was so disheartening. Yeah, that's, that but, one takes cake for me. Buffalo rewind. Uh, so I'm gonna move on to something a little easier to talk about. Uh, most improved player of season two. My choice. Is- hmm. Most your choice is who? Gur. Wait, Gur? what? Say again? Gur. Like, oh, Gur. You know oh, the guy we good, just had. I know, but yeah, but you. Oh, have I'm to sorry. No, no, because I couldn't hear you. His can... placements started at the beginning of season two. Dude started at like 17th, and then got 13th, and then got ninth, and then got ninth, and then got seventh, and then won NA East, <laughs> and then placed top eight at SCR. Like to me, that's just consistent. Okay, hold on. Let me say this name, and then maybe I'm wrong here. Would um, Hero Killer like would he apply here or not? Um. What do you more be about? What do you be more of like a breakthrough player? Yeah, to me, I feel like Gurr's always kind of been consistent with Injustice Two. Was he though? Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, I mean, even- I feel like Gurr's always like every tournament he's usually been in the top sixteen or top eight since like the beginning of the game. Yeah, like I can probably. Well, remember that uh, the reason why I keep saying season two, I'm talking about season two, most improved player of season. two. Just like we talk biggest choke of season two. Like it's, we're literally talking about the, the start of IPS season two up until now. Okay, to the end? Okay. So I don't know who you guys have as your pick for... I would put basics. Yeah. I was just thinking about basics just because like when I was I was at LCQ and we had... No one had basics winning that. Literally not one. So it was like, you know, the only person that probably had him was Tweety. And that was, you know, because they're training partners and he believes in his boy. But, you know, he came out of nowhere and beat really good players to win LCQ. And then, obviously, you know, he didn't do that that great at IPS Finals. But, but like, Gurr, like, I don't know, because I always known that Gurr was a good player. And I just think that he deserved ex- everything that he's gotten. And he probably deserves more. I can't see it as, an imp- like, the most improved. Because I was like, this is where he should have been, Gurr. I know you can do it. That's my mentality towards it, at least. Yeah, especially like in the past games. I mean, I don't know. Like, I know it's season two. We're talking about Justice Two, but like Gurr, like has always been a good player. So like, you know, oh my God, Gurr got top eight, you know, three, four times. It's a surprise. It's not a surprise. Well, but, remember that I'm not talking about someone who just know, came out of nowhere and started. But I'm talking about just like if you look at their placings over the course of season two, who has shown the most improvement and yeah, placings then. wise. Yeah, then you're I right. I mean, Gerd literally was like, it, it, it. you actually just see it getting better. It goes 17th, 13th, 9th, 9th, winning at NA East, and then placing top. Like, it's literally just been this. Steady. Yeah, if you put it that way, I, I, I see don't know, that. Can't you, say the same thing? can't you say the same thing about Hero Killer? He used to be like a the God Scrub, I guess, and then all of a sudden, you know, start traveling. Say the same thing for Basics, too. I mean, uh, Hero I mean, Killer literally can't. I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased because, you know, I want to support Cyborg, you know, a Cyborg player, but. It's, I don't know. I, I'm going with Hero Killer. Unless you have another segment that's Breakthrough Player. I'm well, I mean, I, I still have more. Uh, okay. I was okay. going to do a Breakthrough Player. We could talk about that if you want. Um, but the next one that I wanted to bring up was the hypest set of Season My pick is Burrito Voorhees vs. Combat at LCQ. Yes, yes. That has to be yes. at least top three sets in season God, two. God, you should have been there. That was a really damn good set. Been there live. Thing, dude? Are you joking? Like, Bro, listen, we had Soul Calibur players get hype in that room. Soul Calibur <laughs> players playing next to us on the other side of the room were getting hype for his fucking Swamp Thing. Like, I was like, what the fuck? The entire room stopped doing what they were doing to watch that set. That was the hypest oh. shit ever. It was crazy, dude. Because not even on top of that, no one ex- no one really was talking about Brito Voorhees, you know, being that far in the tournament, which I think is crazy because the dude's a solid player. 
But then he comes on stage going up against Combat, who, you know, outside of my own opinion, had was in the talks of everyone as being one of the favorites to win the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, that player is, like, super consistent. He wins, like, most of the, what's it called, War of the God Weeklies. Yeah, so be- between Combat, Deoxys, and, like, a couple others, those were the favorites. Like, for some reason, Breed of War, he's, his name was never really brought up. And uh, I thought that was kind of crazy. So then he sits down to play combat. And I was like, oh, well, Rip Burrito. He picks Swamp Thing. Oh, definitely Rip Burrito. And then he wins. <laughs> I just thought that was crazy. Any um, other, uh, anything, any other, uh, aside from that one, though? You, uh, hype is Scar versus Scar, dude. <laughs> like, down to the Tweety last versus Scar is I, really I, I hyped to also. Scar versus Tweety as the runner-up. Yes, dude, that fucking EX fucking uh, breath. Oh my god, I fucking jumped out of my chair. Dude, that was actually crazy. The only reason that set isn't my personal pick as first place for that is because, to me, that set, outside of the gameplay, which was really good, the storyline of Scar is what made that set so good. So, when I, to me, I'm personally thinking, like, strictly gameplay. I think the set with... Uh, Breed of Orhees in combat takes it. But Scar vs. Tweety was insane. That Galaxy Brain Frost Breath was was wild. That read was so ahead of time, too. It was like in the future. He literally, yeah, he looked like 10 seconds into the future and then comes back. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those reads where you're like, dude, that makes so much sense because that, you know, Starfire is going to try and chip you out and that's a fucking yeah. flying ass mid. That was such a. <laughs> I was waiting for like a teleport or something that came out of nowhere. I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> yeah, if, yeah, that would have been lit. All right, so the next one I'm going to talk about since we're moving at a faster pace is uh, biggest upset of season. Biggest upset. I have Han Rashid beating Rewind round one at S. Hmm. I didn't even get to see that, nor did I. Was that even stream? Yep. Wow. I don't even remember that. SCR. What was I doing during that? <laughs> Dude I goes, didn't actually watch any of SCR. It was literally round one going up against Han Rashid's Robin and he just starts mopping. And then it was, he, I think he was up 2-0 and then Rewind started coming back but then Han Rashid uh, was able to clutch You that. know what match I want to say? Honeybee versus what's his name? Dubalisk? The Enchantress player? <clears throat> That to me was amazing. Oh, that is a like when I saw game. that, I was like, "Holy shit!" I like that. Not to mention, when the hell do you ever see an Enchantress player? Exactly. I don't want to sound biased towards Enchantress because she was the last character I was wanting to learn in just two. But when I saw that, I was like, "Wow, this this that was like one of the do, craziest do matches basic. I've ever seen." Is his name too basic? Yeah, yeah, too basic. Yeah, that that match. Deox has brought up a good one. Vendetta beating Samija at SCR. That's a that's a solid. One. Wait, was that on stream? No, it was off stream. I was there watching. Yeah, it. see, because I don't remember wow. seeing that. But yeah, that damn. But did anybody record it? I don't know. I know. I I know the reaction video, like the pop off afterwards, is recorded. So. Hmm. Yeah, in terms of upsets. Damn. I don't know. For me, again, you guys can blow me up, and I'm, I'm gonna be biased again. And this is having a war of the gods. I'm gonna have to say Hero Killer against Sonic Fox when he blew me up. I think it was 3 0 when he blew up his best characters. He beat up Starfire, he beat up um, Firestorm, and I forgot who the other character is this, you know, that uh, Sonic Fox used. All the fucking cyborg. I, I thought that was for me. Very that impressive. was pretty good, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was a really good run. Yeah. But that sparked a lot of conversation. That's Can really I... what started the cyborg. Yeah, exactly. Can I put an honorable mention out there? Go ahead. Uh, from season one, Slayer losing to Yamini and to the Jet. Well, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean Slayer, Slayer losing Land Jet. to Infinity is another that, big one. Dude, what? Have we not that one also. That up? How did yeah. we not even think of that? I that honestly, I don't know why I didn't even that. think about it. Dude, actually, wait, that has to be the biggest blow yeah, up ever. I think that needs to Well, he, no, just because the fact. the biggest blow up. No, it's the biggest blow up just because of the fact that Slayer tweeted what he tweeted before that fight happened. What, what did he tweet? Saying you didn't see what he tweeted? He's basically oh. saying that like women aren't great at fighting games. Yeah, and then he lost. He loses the week after but that. She or the is, weekend. But she, wait a minute. She is 
uh, King's girlfriend. I, I don't know if people know that. Like, she practices with him a lot. Like, I don't know. Why, why would she be bad? Yeah, but the statement still stands, though. No, I understand that. <laughs> like, you have to be accountable for what you said. I'm a fool for saying that, but... Uh, no, I, I agree. That's definitely up there. Wait, who is... AC's ketchup is saying that AC's not around. I don't know when did we talk about AC. I don't know. Uh, I can't see the chat right now because I have my browser on uh on for YouTube. Okay. Did anyone mention AC? No, I wait. AC? I don't know who that. Maybe is. they're talking about. Maybe that's what they're talking about. Is Jet? Oh, AC is Legoland Jet. I have literally no idea who that is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry. Look, man, I wish I was in tune with uh, international competition. I haven't even been in tune with American competition in the last two week, two years, really. So that's Wait, why are people calling him Legoland Jet if his name is Aixi? Maybe, maybe a switch name. Well, no, I, honestly, I mean, Slayer vs. Uh, Infinity might actually, I might need to... I wouldn't even call that an upset just because I knew how good she was before they played. Because she actually mocked I mean, me though. before that. Yeah, no, it's a fact. It's, it's an upset because of the fact what Slayer said. Yeah, right, so biggest blow player. up of season two. Congratulations to Slayer for winning that category. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> um, two more categories. Most consistent player of season two. I have Tweety because his average placing out of all of his placings, like it averages out to literally fifth place. Out of all the tournaments, dude's got first, second, 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 and then SCR. I think he got like seventh, which moved him down a little bit. And then IPL. See, this last tournament, does that put Rewind a little bit above him in terms of consistency? Because I know an Rewind's been playing like crazy. Be made that Rewind might be wait a minute. What a, wait a minute. I think on, it's going to come what down between Samid? Rewind and Tweety. Samid is also really consistent. I know. He sh I think he's the most consistent. But Tweety and Rewind win more majors. So that gives them. A a bit of an of, of an advantage. What, what was it again? Get right. I know he won one as well. I know Rewind won Evo. Yeah, but Samir also won something. He he beat Tweety in the grand final. He won CEO. Yeah, he was CEO. Yeah, he did win. Uh, wait, so wait, do they all have one major apiece? I think so, right? No, no. Um, wait. Because I couldn't. Who won the SCR? SCR was Fox. uh was it Sonic Fox? Yeah, Sonic Fox. Okay. Did Tweety even go to SCR? So I think they yeah, like went to the SCR. He actually that was his worst placing. I think he got like seventh or fifth or something like that, which moved his average down a little bit. And now I, I see the chat like talk about why isn't Fox in the most consistent. And the only reason why I'm saying this is because Fox really like if you look at the placings, it's not as consistent as you know consistently getting first and second and maybe even third. yeah for this for this <laughs> uh, specific season right like yeah, uh, like realistically well, uh, well, as weird uh, as it sounds Sonic is not the most consistent this season well he may not be but it depends what your last category is because if it's the who the best players in the overall I would say Sonic Fox that would well, be my be favorite. best player overall is Sonic Fox there's no, I don't even have as a category because I feel yeah. like that's just obvious. Well, I thought maybe you would. That's why I'm saving. You know, I was going to save that. No, sure. the last category I have is best performance at a single of. Yeah, he's talking about sp specifically who has the best results for this season, not the entire injustice too, since day one. Oh, I understand. But what? What? Say the last category again, Big D. The last category is best performance at a single event. I have rewind lose at SCR because he lost for first round and then still placed third. That's really hard to do. Yeah, that's really hard to do. To lose that's your first match, really you have to play hard. literally 30 games to get up there. Like that loser and that SCR itself, whether you're on the winners or loser side, was a bloodbath. So imagine losing first round and then coming all the way back and still getting third. Like that's insane to me. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Do we have any other choices? Because I can't remember anything right now. That's just the one that stands out to me, was Rewind. Yeah, I'm trying to think of anything else right now. I can't. It's the fact that he lost the first match, and then he played like a million matches to no, get know, up hard, to top hard, three, hard to which do. really makes it... That, that's definitely... That, that, that just wins that free. Uh, Runner-up... I don't even know. I would say maybe Tweety, losing before top eight at Evo, and then still placing second. I would say that's that's pretty high up there because yeah. he got three owed by Gurr in the top sixteen winners, and then beat I forgot who he beat first, but then he beat Gurr and then ran that losers gauntlet at Evo with you know 
Samij and everyone else. Samij, Fox, like that's a crazy run. So that gets second place for me. Was that uh, Tweety's first Evo medal? <clears throat> um, I believe so. I I don't know for sure, but I. Th so imagine your first Evo getting second. That, I'm trying yeah, I believe that was his first Evo because I don't think he went to an Evo from KX. He did not. No, I don't believe so. Not that I remember. Yeah, I don't think Because so. I, know, I know the top eights for the first Evo of MKX in the second year. Okay. That's surprising, like, how good he, you know, how good he was possessed, you would think, you know. Yeah, that was his first Evo medal. And then yeah. Silver Eye and Bio also made their first Evo. Okay, cool. Yeah, well, that Evo was fucking... <laughs> yeah, maybe I was going with Speedy then. I mean, your first Evo, lose, and then you make, you know, you still, you know, have a, have a huge impact. At a, you know, the biggest fighting game tournament in the world, I would probably go with that then. Okay. Yeah, I think between all those, I mean, those are, like, I mean, they're all crazy feats to be able to accomplish. Yeah. But for me, it just to be able, not even really just for rewind to lose first round and then still placing third, he lost to someone that was completely unseated. Like it, it was just, it was a huge heartbreak to be able to lose like that, but he still kept his composure and got third. Like, I know I wouldn't be able – if I lose first round, I'm not getting third. Like, it's just not happening. So, uh, that I thought that was pretty – Can cool. I add one more topic? Sure. Okay, who would you guys say is one of the players to have one of the crazy surprise picks in tournament or, like, a jack-of-all-trades, like, just crazy characters you would not expect to see them use? Oh, that's mm. interesting. I need time to think about that. Yeah. I mean, basics with the Starfire is a pretty surprise pick. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's one of them. That came to my mind. Um, I'm trying to think of Combo Breaker and CEO this year, like if there was anything. The few that come to my mind is Bio when he used Cheetah against Hayate. Oh, yeah. That's I personally never up. saw that coming. Yeah, that's definitely up there. I can't pick that because Bio was like my only training partner between CEO and Evo. And I knew he played Cheetah. So I can't I can't really use that because it wasn't a surprise for me. Oh, yeah. But it was really cool to see Cheetah in tournament at that level. Because um, when I saw that, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting to see like Harley or Bane or Black Manta, you know, something like that. I I I know this is like super overplayed, but like outside of basics, since it's already been said, I'm just gonna pick someone else. I honestly think Sonic with the Joker is just. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I just no one, no one thought he was because I mean he picked so many characters and he was showing off Black Canary by winning with her at SER and like picking all these other characters and then at the biggest tournament of season two he just sticks with the Joker. I just thought that was crazy. Granted, he did bring out Captain Cold against Hayate, but like the majority of his wins came from Joker, including Grand Finals of the IPS Finals. Yeah, we don't even... That is kind of crazy. I think Sonic's character usage for the whole IPS was 95% Joker and 5% Captain Cold. Was it not? I'm pretty sure that's it was. all the characters he used, right? That. Like, that's that's makes it that much crazier. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out... I, I didn't get to watch the top four because it was like, like a nine and I had to work next day. Um, so I'm going to have to go... I'm pretty watch. sure he ran old Joker and only used Captain Cold for... Hayate's he also rocket. used Black Manta. I just don't remember in which matchups. Oh, I do remember. In the IPS? Yeah. Wait, at the finals? Or? I don't remember no, him no, no, seeing... No, no, I don't remember him finals. using Black Manta. Well, in the IPS, it says that he... No, no, I'm talking specifically IPS. Yeah. According to his I'm pretty sure Sonic Fox only used... He used Joker, the entire tournament, and then Captain Cold just yeah. for no, Hayate's rocket. According to Van Hop's, um battle whatever battle log he used black man i don't know which matchups though but it says that he did use him yeah i think he used Manta. oh he did use black man yeah that's what it says here remember where listen he won i well, right not remember him Joker. using black Manta. that's it like we had to all retire for that <laughs> i'm way ahead of you dude i'm way ahead of you <laughs> yo sonic fox literally put everybody on notice like including literally dude the joker like, okay, I understand how balanced this fighting game is, but the Joker. But, dude, yeah, honestly, that but that just goes to say, like, Injustice 2 is such an underrated game. Like, the balance is good, dude. If you can do that kind of stuff at a high level against, dude, the players Sonic Fox is going up against, he's going up against, like, Rewind, like, all these players with Joker, and it's it's possible to do that because the game isn't that as, you know, the game is pretty balanced. Yeah, I would say so. 
it and he though. even said it himself in one of the interviews uh, at the IPS finals, saying that the competition this time around at the finals, as compared to season one, was light years ahead. Like it is, it was. Yeah, exactly. Hard. Like the people right now, the people right now competing and trialing for Injustice Two, they know the game, they know the matchups. They're not going to go there and be like, "Oh, what's this character?" You know, like they put work into the game. You think they know All the right. Joker matchup? So those are yeah, that's dude, the uh, dude, come on. That I had wait. I just want to say, dude, I watched Sonic Fox stream Injustice 2 a lot, and I can tell you, like, over the f couple months or so, he's been playing Injustice 2 online with his King of the Hills Rewind or whatever. He plays Joker in them. It's not like he just randomly came running over Joker. I know, but I'm sure, like, I know, but I'm sure these picks that he's using, you know, he's he's a smart player. Like, he knows when the Joker would do well in these matchups, and he knows where he would. I'm not I'm not saying, like, the character. Yeah, of bad. course. Of course he's not, but... Well, I don't know, because the matches he used Joker in, like, do we really think Joker would do good against Batman? Yeah, he's got a great option. Like, yeah, I mean, Joker can knock him down in the corner and just go ham on his knockdown. But aside from that, yeah, like, in my opinion, so. Batman would be a good choice against Joker. He's used him before against King. Like, why is it a surprise? It's not like... Yeah. Well, maybe it's just because it's a match Sonic Fox feels comfortable playing in rather than it being a Besides, Joker thing for Batman, King you know? Anyway? Like, he destroyed King. He destroyed all the Batman players yeah. for Joker, so... I mean, it might be a match that's not so bad for Joker. You know, I don't, you know, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a lot of variables. I just feel like it goes to say, it goes to show that this game is a lot more balanced than people give well, it credit I'm sure for. Sure, it is. Nobody said it wasn't. Hey, Ketchup, how you doing? All right. So hey, what's up, Ketchup? That's it for like the award ceremony part of it. I don't know if you guys have any other statements. We do have one more segment, which uh, this is the part where Silver Eye is supposed to come in. Where um, is he? Is he here? Oh yeah, do you want to explain that part? Silver Eye, uh, so well, can, if you can hear me in the chat, we're, we have you can hop on Discord right. if you want. We're, we catch up just joined. Um, so while we're waiting on Silver Eye to join in, catch up. I mean, do you what do you, tell us your thoughts about IPS? I know it must have hurt a little bit not being there, but uh, I mean, you did a, you guys did a great job on the videos. Um, but just I mean, tell us a little bit about. Yeah, I mean. Um... So, uh, first things first, sorry about my crappy microphone. Uh, Mustard and his wife are currently streaming downstairs using my headset. So, <laughs> my oh, microphone okay. is. If we deal with M2 Dave's. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's fine. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, like, there's there's always lots and lots to say about the IPS finals in general. And I don't want to take too long here because I know you guys are on limited time. Um, it was. You know, the, the finals itself was great. Like fundamentally, like the matches were sick. There was a ludicrous amount of three twos, which is pretty much all you could ever ask for at a world finals. Um, we're always, you know, unfortunately Europe didn't do as well as it could have done. Um, but that's just almost like the nature of, that's almost like a, an example of just what Injustice 2 has been this year. Like Europe did not have a lot of opportunities this year. Um, I mean, we only had one IPS event, right? We had one event. And if you didn't travel to America, there was no way you could qualify. That was always, I think, my biggest gripe with the IPS was it was kind of marketed as like a world series. But if you didn't travel to America at all this year off your own dime, you didn't have a chance in hell of making it, which fundamentally as a league is a problem because if you can, if you only have to go to America to try and play in these tournaments, which is thousands and thousands at a time, there's no chance you can make it. And especially seeing as you know, the sponsors didn't exist in Europe and stuff, it's very, very kind of like an uphill struggle. Um, <coughs> For that part of the world so the fact that we had two players and they played as well as they did like i'll always be super proud of madness and happy pal like they were undisputedly like the two strongest european players this year and they can definitely be happy they even made it that far um but the finals were sick like you know sonic fox winning may have been a disappointing result for some of us wanting to see you know maybe rewind take it given his circumstances and stuff but sonic fox played super well and he the big thing fox did was take this this community opinion of fo of characters being like unviable and not worth picking and just flipped it on its head but this guy literally won with black manta the joker and captain cold that that was his character pool for the finals and he won the whole thing so you know i feel like fox kind of single-handedly exposed a lot of community opinions about characters being not worth it because if he believed they were worth it and he had the skills to make them work he won the whole tournament with those characters. You know, how how many how many people did we hear over the course of the two years saying, "Oh yeah, Joker sucks, don't bother," and he literally won the World Finals this year. So, you know, we we got to give him that for that saying that characters maybe there is a bunch of slept on characters. You know, Black Canary was another. Yeah, I agree with that. And the fact that the tournament had so many character usage. Dude, I thought the Joker was banned. I don't know about you guys. I I, I heard he was banned because of his X-ray or something like that. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, like on a personal note, on a personal note, you know, Jake and I sort of can't thank the guys enough for 
the amount of shout outs that we got, it was actually really kind of nice to see. Um, for those that kind of wondered what happened there, we can't really go into details, but it's basically like us not being at the finals, it was not the fault of anybody. It was not the fault of Netherrealm, Warner Brothers, you know, ESL, our employer, or whatever, in the sport. It, it was nobody's fault. It was just unfortunate travel snags that we got hit by at last minute that we are working on it and it will be fixed for next year. But we we like quite literally physically could not get it fixed in time for the finals because just how long the process takes. So, yeah. you know, unfortunately we had to miss it. But the big thing about the event was that the commentary was well represented without us. You know, like Chef Mitsuwon's got to get a little bit more experience on like a big front. Chef has always been, in my opinion, the most underrated commentator in the entire FGC. So I was glad to see him get another chance. Off Armor has you no know, Armor has come a long way, a really long way since last year. Um and you know aquaman is is hype as always ultra david is good as always like the tournament was well represented without us having to be there so you know that was all in all like it wasn't a huge problem that we weren't there do you know what i mean like it, it didn't suffer yeah. without us it was it was a i guess in a way kind of like a bittersweet feeling like you wanted to be there but they definitely did this uh this finals justice i think i mean it, yeah, it, I was really happy to see it. I mean, my personal favorite, I never realized how good Aquaman and Wonder Chef are together synergy wise. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It, yes. it was it was amazing. It's um it's basically it's it's the combination of analysis on one the best commentary combination is always analysis and a play by play. You know, like a, a hype man to call the action and that moment is so tragic. My god, I felt so bad. I, I can't um, I actually pause the stream because I, I can't look I can't, at it. Yeah, it doesn't make yeah. me emotional right You're now. looking at two opposite ends of the emotional spectrum, right? That was god. Um, that's basically Scar saying thank you very much to the cowboys for making my charge up <laughs> Hop over that that acid pool, but it's it's it's. It, it, I, I could never figure out actually what happened because we had assumed maybe he was expecting Scar to die from the ticking damage, but because the tick does eleven and Scar had fifteen health by the end, even if he got an extra tick, he actually still would have survived with four health left. But that is a uh, yeah. It's the just reason awful. I, I both it, it's horrible to watch, but it's still an amazing clip because it shows just how much it meant to go. Like this, this is an amazing tournament, and it shows that not every, like, not every injustice player is playing it just for cash, right? Like, this was a guy that genuinely like loves the game and loves its community and wanted to play as high as he could because he's a world class player. Like, he gave <sighs> a shit about that tournament. Yeah, he really did. Um, so our other guests in right now before we sign off, we have uh, Silver Eye hey. who's joining us. Um, so. I just, I'm just going to kind of give you the floor. Uh, there's a reason why you're here. You want to, you had something that you wanted to talk about. So I'm just going to kind of give you the floor, and the rest of us will chime in as we. Need. Sure. Um. Yeah. Well, not only that, I wanted to say first of all, um, that I think that it was the IPS finals. I mean, it was it was run really, really well. Like you know, everyone's been saying. Um, it did feel really bad that we all had to share one monitor because we were sitting like really, really close to each other and like leaning on like at times we had to kind of move. We had no mics and we could hear the commentary, but you know, it was really good. The only, besides those problems, like the only thing I kind of had an issue with was I had a lot of my friends who like aren't into the FTC stuff. They heard about this. So they were watching, they don't know anything about all this. And they were like, Hey, um who's the guy with the pink hair he was going in on you guys and i'm like what and they're like yeah it was like saying like you know can't believe that you know so and so made top eight thought you'd go oh and two and saying that this person got his back blown out this tournament and they're online personified like who is it? like i think that it's cool to like say little things when you're commentating but you you kind of have to like have that certain level with the with the players where like you you shouldn't be like tossing shots like come on we worked hard to make the finals nobody wants to hear you know, how, oh, this person's a, comp you know, complainer, or this person did this, or this person did that. That's the only, like, thing I had with the commentary was, personally, 16 bits part. Like, his commentary was good, but, like, maybe it's me. I'm not from the MK9 days, because when I brought it up, everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's always been like that. Oh, yeah, it's always been like that. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't come from those times, you know, and it just kind of seemed, like, kind of just shady to me when people who don't even know about the game are coming to me like, damn, these guys were going in on you, or damn, I had to turn down the commentary when he was on because this and that. Like it was, that was a little bit ugly, but you know. So, so basically, what you're saying is that, I mean, from what it sounds like, that you're saying maybe the things, some of the comments that were being said, don't look good to the casual. 
for, for, sure. for people that for people that don't know you know what 16 bit is like yeah yeah and and it's like even if you do know how a person is there's a certain level of comment there's a certain level of professionalism that you have to keep you commentate maybe off the mic you may say those things that's perfectly fine but like when it's on and you have people tuning in and listening and watching and saying something like oh yeah this guy didn't do anything you know he's online personified he got his back blowing out all these tournaments like huh like, <laughs> like come on like we're not from those days okay we get it that back then in mk9 you guys were into all the trash talk and the crazy that's perfectly fine trash talk is all good but when it's on common Got to kind of, I think, in my opinion, should just clean it up just a little. I mean, 16 bit's yeah. always been about the banter. He, he has always been one of the biggest, sort of like, you know, banter guys where, like, there's there's a lot of playful trash talk in the way he's commentated and kind of portrayed himself. Um, I guess, you know, on a commentary side, that um, this is kind of, hard. I don't want to sound too negative, but there, there's definitely a time and a place for certain things. And anything, I've always been a firm believer that anything that sounds like it could be insulting to a player, like personally offensive to a player, should be kept out um pointing out results is inevitable if a player did bad at an event or has had a bad year you have to bring attention to that but anything that could be a, an actual like insult to the player probably should be left out um and that's not a knock at 16 bit personally that's that's just a, a in general thing that i believe but yeah right. if players can get insulted by things it's always healthy that if a player is upset by something they should probably bring attention to it you know right so, right and, and so especially, right. especially what Silver, what did what do you think he said about you specifically? That's kind of what I want to know. I think that's what we kind of only want to know because you're probably not going to care if he says something about the next guy. You're talking about yourself, right? No, I care about what anyone says about anyone. These guys, I don't just play these guys; they're all my friends. You know, we're personal friends. I we know a lot about each other off the sticks, but it's like I didn't listen to what he personally was saying to me because I don't. I'm not that kind. Like if I listen to the commentary and I'm getting shots thrown out, I'm going to start talking. I don't. I don't want to do that. Like I don't want to be. Like, all I heard, my friends were just like, yeah, you know, we heard, like, it sounded like he was going in and they were just laughing. I was like, oh, I guess that's that's what the community says he always does. And it's funny that we should just accept it, like, oh, yeah, this person's like that. But, like, if someone else had said it, it would have been a big deal, you know, but I don't know. That's just how I felt on it. I'm not, so... I just felt like it should have been cleaned up a little bit. So and we, and we have never no headsets. actually we got to hear that in our ears. Like, we have to hear that stuff when we're playing. Because the commentators are right there, and we have no headset, which is an issue in itself. I mean, uh, it's off it's off topic a little bit, but that should never be the case for a world finals of a circuit to exactly. be resorted to hearing cast. Right, and then the monitors almost had no sound. That's why you see us sitting so close to it because we couldn't <laughs> hear. And then they had headsets, and they're like, "Oh well, you know, the headsets are not really working. Sorry." And damn, yeah, that would drive me never... nuts. But can I just ask something? You, when you guys were sitting and playing on the TV, right? Like, you see it on video. There's a monitor right behind it. How come you guys weren't playing on the other sides of it? Did they not set it up like that? Because I know in a lot of tournaments they have that. Yeah. When like, they, you know how there's there's a table and there's two TVs and you guys have yeah. your own TV to each other, but it's playing the same one? Yeah, that's what we assumed. But um, they when they took us to Prism and started showing it off, they were like, uh, yeah, we're just going to be using one monitor because it's more optimal. It'll help us get through the matches faster. Did you say Prism? Prism. P-R-Y-S-M. Oh. Set <laughs> prison. What the hell? Come on, dude. That's, that's, that's what that's what they told us, and I, I mean, it would have been fine if at least we had some mic, like I mean, some headsets. It was, that was pretty. Yeah, I think that's the only thing I didn't. I didn't really get to the the reason why I'm one of the reasons why I'm just kind of like giving you the floor with this topic is because, um, well, a for one, my career job I work from home, mm -hmm. so I was working during the finals, so the stream was muted for me. For, for about 85%. So I don't really know exactly what, like what he said that was like an issue. Um, I do know how Steve can get sometimes. I just don't know if it translates into, you know, when he was on yeah. the mic. That's why I'm right. kind of like just letting you go. So you can get as specific as you want. Right. Um, but I don't really, I don't really have enough helpful input on this one. Right. The only thing, okay, like... the only... The only thing, if you don't mind, uh, Silver, the only thing I can say is, like, as somebody who called for fucking his job, I mean, he and I were on each other's throat. Like, I mean, it was really, really bad at one point. Um, he's probably 10% of what he used to be right now. Like, and I, I think 60 minutes, of, I, again, I also, I'm one of the guys, you know, I'm doing work, you know, I'm doing my thing. I usually watch it, you know, with the muted, but. 
honestly, I don't see what any of this, if, if it's a big deal, if at all, like if somebody talks trash about you, that kind of motivates me personally to do even better in tournament, you know, to, you know, to train harder. I just, I just don't see what the big deal is. I think this is a non-issue, like for me at least. Depends I mean, on what's said. Not, like I said, it, if, if it's about a player struggling in tournament, that's different because pointing out bad results is inevitable. I know some players out there have, you know, it's a very common thing as a commentator. This is, again, coming from experience. Um, it's very common that a commentator will point out a player struggling at an event or struggling during a year or having a bad result. Right. And fine. pointing, it's very common that a commentator gets tweeted at angrily by the player saying, I can't believe you said that about me, that I did this bad. I don't want people to hear about that or I don't want to know that. That's inevitable. Like, that's kind of something <laughs> that just comes to the territory. It's when things become a bit personal. Um, it's when right. something is, is said about you that is actually insulting, that has nothing actually to do with the game itself. That's when it's different, I think. Right, and, and the thing is, the thing is, like, I'm not making a big deal out of it. Uh, if I was making a big deal out of it, I would have been on Twitter. I would have been, oh, this and that, that. It's not yeah. a big deal. It's just something that I noticed that I don't think people should do. They had it. Look, there was an issue before where people said Arma would, you know, say little, like, comments or make, like, little jokes. Like, oh, you know, some people say that so-and-so players carry, and everyone just got on him because of it. So I don't, it's, to me, it's like, all right, so then why did we, talk to him about it but then with him it's completely different is it because he has some kind of legacy like armor around him like it's not that big of a deal to me but i feel like it should be addressed nobody wants to play and hear oh yeah oh i didn't even think he'd, he'd make top eight i thought he was gonna go oh and two like that's like you could word it better than that that's like, that may be true but i i think like on the other hand you can literally take offense to anything like quick here look at big d can only win with armor Look at Neb today winning and you know can only win with zoning and you know with Freddie and MK9. Like you can that like you can get offended by that with almost everything. Like it right, right, people but that's not something a commentator should say though. Maybe like you're commentating, uh, people are watching this. But here's the thing, I, I understand they are, but dude, don't you think there's some truth to all these statements? Like, you know, Big D won because of the armor, it was part of his gameplay. You know, like <laughs> I won because of, like so, again, there's nothing to get offended with. Like it's true. But, let, let me ask you a question. If a commentator came out right now and was watching Gura play and said, oh, yeah, you know, the only reason why he's in finals is because Adam released before that. He wasn't doing it. Is that okay to say? Well, look at that. Is that literally it okay to say? It would depend on what I don't think it is. It depends it's on the wording. wording. It's That's the wording. What I'm saying. How you said it. Depends it depends on no. the wording, how you say it. Yeah. But... Right. So, so you could say, you could say, for instance, oh, this, it's, a, it's a surprise that so-and-so player made top eight. You know, it, he played really good players and, you know, maybe he hasn't done so way, good, good in the past. Instead of, oh, I'm surprised this play, person made top eight. I expected them to just go, oh, do Like, what? huh? Like, the way you worded it is just really... It always does depend on wording. So, like, in that in exact instance, actually, a very common thing that Mustard and I would do is if a player doesn't really see results until a character comes out, the fact of the matter is there are many different things that you could say there that are all right. Um, yeah. Like, you would say... And it's true. It is exactly true. It's not you're sugarcoating it. It's that, let's say a player, they had to find their niche with this character. Let's say a character couldn't, a player could not quite find their footing with the game. And then when this character comes out, it caters to all of their strengths. And therefore, they now finally have a character they can gel with. It just took the DLC because this character is unique and no other character played like it. And now right. they finally have their place. You wouldn't say on commentary, like, this guy was crap before this character came right. out. Right. Exactly. You know, like, That's what I'm saying. The wording you know, is. <laughs> No, I, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I 100% agree. Yeah, the wording is everything. Yeah, the wording is everything. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. Like, I'm not trying to make a big deal out of it. It's just I'm gonna call something out if I like see it and it makes me feel like a certain way instead of feeling, you know, that inside of me and never bringing it out. And one day I explode and it looks weird. You know, I just wanted to, you know. Just... No, no, I understand. I, I think the thing to take into context here is that I know, you know, Rio and I when we play MK9 and. Like, honestly, a lot of that stuff was nothing but personal. Like, you know, dude, I would get into a mic and I would just trash smoke players until they literally had to drag me out of the mic. Again, that, and it, again, it, it was all fun, and, you know, like, but it was kind of personal, but it wasn't like malicious. And I know right. Rio's got his, you know, he's got his, you know, fair share of horrible comments when he played Cabal. But I think we're kind of used to that. So it, it's kind of like, okay, you know, it's not a... You know, it's not, it, and again, it's not just the two of us. It was literally, you know, like pig and. Yeah, but it is also a different time, though, because right, back then it wasn't esports like this. So you have to be professional, you know, like things yeah, now. Honestly, are... I don't know what was said. Uh, most of the, the, like, the, 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 you know, the matches that I've seen, 
six bit comedy to me they look professional in fact like he tells like the back stories a lot of the again not that not the ketchup is not doing it but like he does like the back stories about the players which in a lot of the community you know because they don't know you know a lot of who these guys are aside from sonic fox so if somebody comes up playing online and he does well you know he'll say a back story, okay this guy he did this with war of the gods you know he played online etc that's kind of what i see from him the most i don't really see a lot of these insults that people say that he made i really i just honestly i don't because that's you came from you came from that time that's fine to you like the people watching like don't understand that they don't know who it is like they don't understand who some of them don't know who you are or i am or and then if you hear like oh i didn't expect this person to do this i thought they would do this or this person you know was doing bad until so and so character they carry that with them and they're like oh okay well this person may not be that good oh okay so this person must be carried oh okay you know just like that Something like that. I mean, it's like I said, it's not that big of a deal to me. It's just something I felt like talking about, you know, because no one else was going to say anything about it. I just felt like bringing it up. If it continues, I don't care personally. I just wanted to bring it up. <clears throat> that's fine. Right. I mean, it's one of those things where, like, if, if there's something that you want to say, that's what, you know, that's what these yeah, parts because, of the because, podcast are. You know what? Dragon caught fire before because back then, you know, Arma would say, like, little things. Like, I, I love Arma. I think he's an awesome commentator. But, like, you know, he, he'll throw, like, the little banter in. They don't know that. Like, and when you when you hear stuff like, oh, yeah, a lot of people say that Dragon was carried before. They really, people really were coming out of the blue, like, oh, yeah, he's carried and he's this and that and saying so much shit about him. And he's like, what? And then he brought it up, but he brought it up personally. So a lot of people don't understand that. You know, like a lot of people are saying, oh, you're soft. They don't compete. They don't place. They don't know anything or what, it's the, what that's like. But, like, it, that really happens. It really does happen. You have to kind of sometimes tone it down just a little bit but whatever that's just no I, I think i think that's a fair point i, I think catch up the best of us but like is it a commentator's job to necessarily protect all the players make them all look you know like they're the best you know players in the world or is it like is it also their job to you know maybe point out some weaknesses say, i mean this is how- there's an art to it um the big the big example i would use is actually tekken master this year Tekken Master is 100% a legend in the Netherrealm scene, for sure. Like, MKX was where he made a name for himself, and in Justice 2, he had a fantastic year last year, and uh, this year, he ended on a pretty positive high, making the finals and both uh, defeating Biohazard 3-0, which was a crazy, crazy good result. Um, but Tekken Master's the big one here, that I know Tekken, Tekken Master and, and, and us, you know, Mustard Knight, know each other really, really well. Every time there's been an international event, Tekken Master's been there. So we go pretty far back with him at this stage. But he, I'm, I'm sure he hasn't, he's never said anything else before. Jake and I have been very, very upfront pointing out that he has not had the year that he had last year. Right. Um, he, he has struggled quite a lot this year. But there's always been, there's always ways to say, it. like, if you're going to point out the negatives a player has had, you don't go all negative. You do sort of bring positives from that. That you mentioned that Tekken Master had a horrendous start to the year because he did, but it was mostly down to the fact that he was looking for his new pool of characters. And he would always pull out these characters last, at the beginning of the year that didn't quite either make sense or they weren't ready. And he would lose to people that he would otherwise be able to beat, but he just did not have the right character for the job. And by the end of the year, he finally settled on his team, found the characters he wants to use. He both wins the Intercontinental Championship easily and then does very, very respectfully at the finals because he finally found his footing with characters he wants to use. You know, like that yeah. that kind of storyline that he's had, is it's it's informative and it's exactly what happened, but it's not saying, oh, Tekken Master was shit this year. Like, you would yeah. never say that because he wasn't. It, he just didn't have the year he had last year. So, yeah, I mean, it's just pretty much, I guess, almost like going in circles, but wording is everything. It's very, very yeah. important. I agree, 100%. Hundred percent, I agree. Yeah, I'm not saying you have to butter up the players, but like just just, just don't be, yeah, players. just don't be too yeah. blunt. Don't be too blunt because that's savage and probably not welcome. Yeah, this day and age, but yeah, I, I agree. I agree. That was that's that was all I. Okay. It was a great event overall. Was... Now you yeah, guys, I, well, you guys, I, well, I, I think it was, I think it was super cool. I mean, watching it was awesome. I mean, it's one of those things where. The finals was so good, I was salty that I didn't make it sort of deal. So I feel like that kind of like, that like shows how good, like production wise, they did a great job with it. I think the only thing that really, the only bad thing I saw was no headsets, which granted, that's a yeah. serious thing to me. But besides that, it seemed perfect. And uh, I kind of want to give a shout out to Joshua Gray because I feel like, I feel like he doesn't, he's not as appreciated as he should be. Uh, and, and you know what? The thing is, I, I got to, 
knowing Josh the way I do, considering that for anyone that doesn't know, we worked for the same fucking company for years, right? <laughs> yeah. Literally the same company. Josh, Josh Gray <laughs> is not just a host. He is not just a host. Not only is he an amazing host, and he does his job very, very well. Um, he has so much. He has more expertise in esports and competitive gaming than anyone in the NetherRealm scene. Period. He he single handedly has more experience in esports and competitive tournaments than anyone in. In my opinion, uh, you know, all the companies involved because he spent years and years at ESL. He has a rich background in loads of different games. He was with World of Tanks for years. He used to do commentary, which moved into hosting. He then became, I think, a product manager where he was working behind the scenes, handling budgets, timetables, staff. Like this guy did a shit ton before he left ESL, um, but always did hosting because it's something that he's very passionate about, having a background in acting and being a performer. So the experience that he has allowed him to basically create Mortal Kombat X in its entirety. Um, there were a lot of people behind the scenes that made Mortal Kombat happen. I know Jake and I did a lot of consulting for that from a European side, but there's a lot of people that worked both for Warner Brothers, which became ESL. Um, like, you know, it's not just Joshua Gray. It's like Brett Beeling, Brian Compton, you know, fucking Compton from EGP. Yeah. He, had a, a oh, big yeah, dude. he had a big hand in it back in the day. Brett Beeling was big, who now works for Red Bull. Obviously, for those that don't know, he's a, a big position in Red Bull doing all their production stuff as well. Um, there were a lot of people that helped the cogs turn during Mortal Kombat that helped it become what it was. But Josh was like the visionary. Um, and, you know, he, he did a lot of stuff, a lot more than just hosting. Um, so when people thank Josh, it's not just because they know him; it's because he generally like this this big deal <laughs> that helped create what the Netherrealm team now has. Uh, so yeah, just FYI. Yeah. I did, I uh, oh. and it's good to know that I wasn't the only one thinking that because, like, I mean, I don't know Josh nearly on the scale that you do, but from what I've seen, I know he's responsible for a lot of the growth concerning esports with our scene. I mean, we're 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 a lucky scene to have them, and I just I'm I don't know. It's it's really cool to have someone who has that much experience, and besides all of that, just genuinely loves our games. He does another game. Dude, he loves Mortal Kombat. That's why he went in so hard with Mortal Kombat Pro League because he and Brett love Mortal Kombat, and that came across very very clearly. Um, like, dude, Joshua Gray and Brett Beeling, they they taught Jake and I everything that we know, not just on commentary, but in like content creation, video creation. We made a lot of videos for them during the Pro League days that would have to go through approval by both of them. And the feedback they gave us to improve those videos are now feedback notes that we keep in our brains today making our modern YouTube videos. Which is awesome. And Brett Beeling being the professor was super cool as yeah. well. Dude, Brett was like, he's like a genius, dude. Like, for real. Yeah. Oh, can I, can I chime in and say, okay, look. Nobody talked about this, right? And I feel like maybe a lot of people didn't know, but can we talk about quickly how... Happy Pal came here and lost his entire luggage. Dude. Like, he lost everything. His clothes, his everything. Wait, how did that I happen? Saw, I, I, airports, man. Airports are shit. Yeah, I, I, can, KP, I, I think KP helped him with clothes or something, but he literally lost everything. That was a while Dude, that and terrible. all that card and, and, and his debit card, all that. He just lost everything. Did he at least like, keep his ID, like, you know, like the basics, you know, I guess, driver's um, license? Did he lose that too? I'm not. I'm not sure because he didn't really complain about not being able to like get on the plane home. It's foreign, so I'm sure they would have gave him hell if he didn't have. The yeah, like imagine that, like losing the passport and stuff. Was shit, the dude, like you, you'd, be, you'd be stranded here in the states. You wouldn't be able yeah, to go I home. You have to go and, back. And he was so cheery. Like he was just happy. Pals, not even thinking about it. He, he's just yeah. every time he's at an event in America, he's just happy to be there. So him and him and Mattis are a perfect partnership in crime because they're both just hilarious guys. Yeah, I met were. them they, for the first were. time at SCR. Those guys are awesome. Uh, I yeah, like yeah. Irish Mantis is bro. Great. They, yeah, they were really cool guys. And and also, um, off topic, but there was another thing about IPS finals that I wish that they better in the future is I think that they should be a little bit more like player inner because kind of we all <laughs> met up with Joshua Gray. Like he met up with us personally. He asked us a lot of questions, wrote them down, and, but they didn't give him the time. I guess to actually call people up. I think, like, Gurr had to ask him because of, like, the time, like, can I get interviewed or something like that? But I feel like they could have maybe, you know, let people know a little bit more about us, you know, because all the people, all these players know is how we play the game. They don't know anything about us or our background. Mm -hmm. I kind of felt like that would have been a little good way to introduce people to the, you know, us off of the, the, the controller. Yeah. Maybe next time.
I, I, I think that's something, and I mentioned it before, it's a little bit underused. I think it's really cool to kind of, like, I always have this idea of having someone, you know, obviously not to the loser because no one likes a salty interview, but like being able to go to the winner and having like specific moments of a set playing in the background and asking like, what were they thinking? Like if you, yeah. if you interview Scar after him versus Gurr and show that last moment and ask what was going through Scar's head right before that scramble happened, I feel like that's stuff that people would want to know. And I don't know. I hope we get to see more of that later on. Exactly. And also because when we first arrived there at the first day, they, they did interviews. Like, I feel like maybe in between, like, you see how right now it's counting down. This is counting. Maybe they could like have a little segment each time it does this where maybe they'll show like a bit in like little bits and pieces of each of our interviews, you know, when they can like just fit it in. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, just something with it, you know, just do something. And all that footage just went to waste. And there was a lot of stuff that people were going to find out about us. There's actually one last thing before we sign off. I just thought about this. Do you think, obviously I wouldn't want this for the Disney channel, just in case. Do you think having uh, microphones by the players should be something to think no. about for future? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Cause sometimes players say something in the moment, but they don't, the you know, it's like, is, just... we've all been there. Every, every single person in this discord right now has been a competitive player at some point. And when you drop a combo, you go, fuck! Yes. Yo, yeah. yo when I played Hayate... You don't want he, that on TV. Exactly. Yo, when I played Hayate, he poked me, right? And I wanted to stand up and do back on one, and I got up grapple. And I literally shouted, what the fuck? And, yeah. you know, <laughs> and I looked up in the sky. No one need... Player cams, yes. Player mics, for the love of God, no. Yeah, <laughs> I no. just know there are, like, other games that have those. I uh, Trust me, I understand why we're saying Maybe no. a microphone for a coach or something, if we, if we yeah. reach that point. Maybe a coach mic or something, but if that's... Dude. <laughs> in my yeah. opinion. Maybe well, we're not ready for well, that. May maybe if we get onto HBO, like... Yeah, you know, yeah. Then maybe. <laughs> but, I, don't I, don't even think, have... I don't even think they're going to show MK on Disney. Nah, no. Okay. No. Dude, I don't know what's gonna happen. No way. That, so. Mortal Kombat will never no be on like a child friendly show. No, God, I, I really wouldn't even, want it to be. Probably not even E League though. Probably not even E League. E League's e -League. had COD though, right? E League's had Call of Duty. I mean, yeah, we'll Call probably Duty have like crazy rules. Spines. It depends yeah, on yeah, age range, doesn't it? Dis disable blood and no fatalities allowed. Which at that point, I wouldn't want them to censor MP. Thing is, you can't disable blood though, at least in Mortal Kombat X. Not anymore, yeah. Do, do, do you remember back in the days where you could disable blood? Yeah, yeah. you had to put in the combat codes. Yeah, yeah. they used to like. I, I, it. Yeah. I think Deception. Yeah, me too. I hope those come back also. Deception that you turn it off as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the 3D MK games, you could go to options and choose if you want blood on low, high, Even or off. The 2D ones. I think there was like. Like, I don't know, like... No, the 2D ones, you couldn't. You couldn't do that. No, you could ones. do a Only Trilogy, I think, for N64, you could turn blood on or off. Yeah. yeah. But, but MK2, MK1, yeah. and UMK3, I don't yeah, think you could. Yeah, it was Trilogy, right? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah it was Trilogy. Yeah, that's what I thought, yeah. NRS, is, they're getting better with the eSports, so I'm pretty sure if they're if they're making MK11, and probably like, all right, let's put an option for this, because we want this... Yeah, they probably TV. will. Let's, you know, add this in. So... Maybe. Uh, I, I guess I just I would never want to see MK totally. be less MK to fit. Yeah, because then would it be MK if you can't do any brutalities? Yeah, or, I, you know? I personally wouldn't want that. I mean, there's a line for everything. I'm willing to give up certain things, but like I would never want like no fatalities and no blood just to be on E League. That's my personal opinion. But I mean, everyone. <laughs> Listen, if they bring back babies, I don't care. To be honest, <laughs> nah. could work. Over Friendships and babalies would be fine. Harakiri's need to replace quitalities. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yo, you you That's actually a good idea for Harakiri. Bro, that would yeah. be so sick. If you just... That's the best idea I've ever heard oh, because yeah. a lot of people are saying bring Harakiri's back, but if you bring them back, everyone's just gonna machine gun them when that, this is finished. Dude, them. You're never gonna see dude, a fatality. I'm so glad that you relate that, to that. Dude, I remember, dude, the day. I remember oh, that. I Deception, you would oh, never oh, get a fatality ever online. Oh, ever. I, I, These I people would lose <laughs> instantly to Harakiri. You would never see a character fatality. I had no experience online. Well, every time yeah. you would beat a Sundell player, they would do a splint there and kill themselves. You're like, really? Every time. It would be the same shit. No, yeah, so that's a perfect idea. 
My cousin and my and my cousin used to get really pissed off because I I would die and then immediately just machine gun that shit instantly. And exactly, it. and they were such easy inputs. They were easier than the fatality, but should be the other way around. To be like triple the size. That's what I was gonna exactly. say. Exactly. But easy your idea is perfect. Right? Catch up to make it be like if it's if you quit in the match, your character's quit quitality is their hard carry. That would be perfect. Yeah, that I think that, I think it's multiple workarounds. You could do that, but I was saying make the hard carry input like if a fatality is up up. You down, have to make it twice as long, dude. You better make that like. 14 quarter circles left and then like hitting <laughs> x and y yeah you need to make it so if your opponent wants to sit there and teabag for like a minute straight then you can kill yourself yeah. but you don't want to make it so right when it's just finished time you just instantly kill yourself because i think i i think it could be a really cool touch but uh bay Baldies definitely need to make a uh a return i think bay Baldies would be oh. so interesting in a tournament scene yeah, imagine just, losing uh, someone in player a close match and you're like damn the match is so close and then you see someone get baby and you're like oh my god he did not dude, just do that Rio, you, you, and I, you and i can relate to that back in the old mk3 days where someone got baby it's like that was the biggest like you are shit yeah. Exactly. Before it was Al worse Bali. than teabagging or doing anything. Like Cabal, it was just Bay such Bally. a statement. Nothing feels yeah. worse than getting bay balladed by Cabal. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter what Exactly. Happens. Well, the, you have to you have to think about now. It just uh, makes you feel a certain way. You have to think about now in the tournament. The, the way the tournament scene is now. Imagine you're going up against someone. Like imagine Scarver's tweeted that match. Mercy. He pulls a mercy to get the. That's even uh, worse. To get the, getting mercy then bay ballad is like the worst. Get, well, make it so you have to have, you have to go through with a mercy in order to get a bay bounty if you really want to go that route. Because imagine being in tournament, oh. given, being given an extra chance and then beating that person. You want to talk about salt, man? Yeah, or lo yeah, that would be yeah. insane. That would be so. I really hope uh, NRS does something like that for the next game. But all that, so I think it's just nice little touches. <laughs> but um. That's what, that's all I had. Also, one thing I want to see, one thing I want to see is I feel like if you play Tormo or something, they should disable pausing during a super or when it says finish them because a lot of times you'll see this hype ass match in top eight, right? Someone land a clutch super or something, and then the opponent instantly goes to player select, and it just kind of kills from the well, hype of the I'm, match. I'm iffy about because like, what if they keep ending the match with that you just have to keep sitting there and just watching it like over and over I yeah but there's nothing wrong with that like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, come the on the supers are like five seconds long that's true and the likelihood of like someone like the whole crowd goes like because i see it like i was watching some tournaments and the crowd gets hype and then you see the player press start go place like and everybody yeah. just like boos and it's kind of stupid you know Dude, have okay, you sat yeah, through yeah. all of flash's super like that he takes you to th two different fucking yeah, time bro that that's why i stopped at one point playing happy pal because he would save his super and, and, yeah, and by the time he's come it. back i've fallen asleep yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah they probably should do. like i know here they told us let all the intros play like when i played some they music, always they like, yeah oh intros also they shouldn't be skippable until no, right? we the move, re can we restart match i don't know yo, wait, wait these nrs these nrs intros are are long like if it was normal, no, like too long, dude. Type thing. These things are talking. For yeah, a but long brings time. hype for the match, though. It's no, all dude, like get it's. Get out of here. It kind of. No, no, I kind of like the intros. It, 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 I think I like the intros a lot too. I wish more people would just let them yeah, rock. I think that's just more of a thing we as a community just need to let them rock the first game of the set. The yeah, it's yeah. something that it needs to be muscle memory. Okay, at look, that look. Point. it's nothing that NRS. If you watch me versus Samija already played here, literally they told us every single match you guys play, let the intros run. Do you know how slow that nah, was? That like, ain't we, we yeah, running, not every match. Yeah, we were looking. They were like, please, because we are like way ahead of schedule. I would literally look at him and he's looking at me. I'm like, why do we have to let these? Like, I just want to get back into this. <laughs> and that goes into what we were talking about before. If you're ahead of schedule like that, get some extra interviews in interviews. there. Like, really show people like the other side and what right. you know top players are thinking in the middle of a set. Play all yeah. video again. Ahead of schedule. What were they doing? Uh, you guys did a good job on those videos. Two I and nine. There, there was can like I, a seven hour gap between. Can I just, <laughs> it was a massive. There was a huge gap. It was no, three, it was like a two yeah, hour. It was, it was like hours. a two or three hour gap. I, I know it was three hours because yeah. we streamed Mortal Kombat trilogy for three hours while we waited for the nice. top four. Oh my god. <laughs> can I just yeah, go reference yeah. and say those those videos that we made? I made eight videos in one day. <laughs> Oh, we, also, we figured those out. videos were sick. Those videos were fucking sick. I machine gunned that shit. I machine gunned it, like, super fast. Wait, I wait, have well, one question for you about those videos. Shoot! How many takes did you get to get the intros you wanted yes. for the match? It only takes about four or five. Um, okay. four, four or five restarts tends to give you kind of, like, the general amount of how many you need. So, and we usually do that with all of our, all of our getting started videos and stuff would be the same kind of approach. So, like, um, 
the second I I gotta say if, if any of the inner sport guys ever watch this podcast, like I gotta give them a, a shout out for that because they worked as as tirelessly as they could to try and get us there um, to speed up the process of what we had to deal with, and unfortunately it just wasn't meant to be. But um, the second we found out we couldn't be there, we had basically had a chat with Travis uh, in the sport and kind of brainstormed. Well, they wanted us to be involved in some degree, even if we couldn't be at the event itself. So. We just said, like, can we make any any content for the show? We don't want to get in the way of their media plans because they obviously had interviews and stuff planned. We don't want to do, get in the way of any of that stuff. But what kind of stuff could we do? And he proposed the idea of, well, look, if we have eight round of one, round one matches, how about you guys make some quick fire one and a half to two minute videos that kind of break down what to expect that we can play during the button checks? Um, and that's kind of, you know, that was what we did. So we just wrote a bunch of scripts, record all the audio, put the footage together, get all the tournaments. It was very easy to do. Um, we, we actually hammered all, all eight of those videos out in one day. So, wow. you know, we were, it's just, it's just, it's like a template really. You just follow a, a template that we had made to all of them. Uh, you know, intro at the beginning, clash in the middle of it, final note on the end, outro, and that was it. So I was happy that we could at least do something. And we do yeah. videos all the time. So that stuff was very, very easy to edit. Real yeah, quick before really we go. Done. I um I'm just for my own benefit. What software do you? Use? It depends. Um, Vegas. I use Vegas at home, but I use Premiere when I'm in the office. I can use both. Premiere is okay. probably better. Uh, Premiere I find a little bit on a personal note. I find Premiere Pro to be easier to edit with in the long run. It's harder to learn initially. Uh, Vegas Pro is more accessible for a lot of people. Um, but I'll always say I actually prefer Premiere Pro. Yeah, because I, I have Vegas Pro right now, and it, it's good. Vegas, but... I just, I just, I'm still teaching myself, so I was just curious. But um, I want to thank you guys for coming on. Sure. Uh, I don't have anything else. I don't know if anyone else has anything else they'd like to talk about. No, I think uh, I don't know. We usually try to keep it, in, you know, uh, like an hour. But we want to thank you guys for the feedback that we got for the last um, episode, and I'm sure you know for the ones we're gonna, you know, get for this one. I want to thank Gur again for coming on. I want to thank Silver Rye. Speaking his mind again, coming on, you know, to the show, and same thing with Ketchup for coming in and joining us. So. And no worries, man. Anytime. Yeah, thank you yeah. guys. Thank you, Gur, uh, Ketchup, and uh, Rai for coming yeah, on. Yeah, really yeah. appreciate Thanks it. Thanks for having me, y'all. Take it easy.